Thank you for staying with us. Welcome to hour two of the program. I'm John Bach. Hi, everybody. I'm Bianca Della Garza. Well, the president and the first lady just have landed in Florida. They are about to survey the damage left behind by Hurricane Ian. This as search and rescue efforts continue in some of the hardest hit communities. Now we've been looking at the reports coming in and sadly the tragic number is that more than 100 people have died as a result of Hurricane Ian. Uh, at this hour, the damage surveys are still going on, but we know 300,000 residents in Florida have no power. Uh, again, President Biden and the First Lady have just landed. Uh, they'll be getting an update on recovery efforts during a briefing with Governor Ron DeSantis and other state officials. That's expected to happen after they take a tour via helicopter to survey some of the damage in the hardest hit places here in Florida. For more on the disaster recovery effort, we want to welcome in former New York City Police Commissioner Bernard Carrick, who knows a thing or two about this type of stuff. Great to have you with us, Bernie. Thanks, John. And also with us, former New York Congressman Michael Grimm, also retired FBI agent and U.S. Marine. Gentlemen, welcome. All right, we're going to get to a lot here, but first we want to start with this uh, meeting between Biden and uh, Governor DeSantis today, the president and the governor. Uh, political rivals, they're supposed to, to put that aside, but Bernie, give us your perspective on how this meeting needs to go and what can be accomplished by President Biden meeting with the governor of Florida today. Well, John, in a circumstance like this, uh, the governor needs all the help. He can get the resources that the federal government has, FEMA, DHS, uh, the Coast Guard. Um, and it's up to the president to make sure he gets that. In the aftermath of 9-11, uh, President Bush sent FEMA, sent DHS, sent the FBI to New York. But keep in mind, it's the governor's show. The governor's in charge. And I, I have to say, and this isn't being political, this is just being straight up forward. I have to say, in my personal opinion, Ron DeSantis is probably one of the greatest leaders I've seen in recent years when it comes to a catastrophe like this. He's on top of it, he's out there in the field, he's supporting his troops, and he's getting every bit of resources he can, which is going to include what the president can give him. Yeah, and he's done this um, despite the mainstream media trying to attack him for things that were just really not not accurate and really not valid. Uh, yesterday, we heard Governor DeSantis addressing criminals who were trying to take advantage, looting uh, after the disaster. He says some of them are in the country illegally. Let's listen to what he told reporters. And uh, we've had four looters that were arrested, uh, I guess, a couple days ago, and, and they need to be brought to justice, and we're not going to tolerate it. But, you know, Three of the four are illegal aliens. And so these are people that are foreigners. They, they're illegally in our country. And not only that, they try to loot and ransack after, in the aftermath of a natural disaster. I mean, they should be prosecuted, but they need to be sent back to their home country. They should not be here at all. You heard the cheers there. I mean, these are the facts. Following up to what Bernie just said about his leadership, Michael, um, what do you make of the governor? And obviously, uh, some will probably try to disparage those remarks. Uh, but these are the facts. If these are illegal people doing crimes, and uh, there will be a zero tolerance here. Well, Bianca, I think uh, I have to echo the, the sentiments of our commissioner there. Uh, DeSantis is an incredible leader, and I can tell you, uh, I was serving as the congressman when Superstorm Sandy hit and devastated, you know, Staten Island and parts of Brooklyn as well as other areas. And it, it is the governor's show. You need strong leadership from the governor. But in particular, with respect to the, the looting and ransacking, it, it's just so infuriating that three out of four of these individuals were illegal aliens that shouldn't have been here. It's an opportunity for him to highlight that because this is a failure of the Biden administration. It has been a failure of the Biden administration and people need to see there are real ramifications to this. And I think DeSantis does that very well. I think he has the leadership and the compassion and the skill set to get through this, you know, horrific storm and, and deal with people on a personal level because that's what happens here. You have to understand that some of these people have lost everything. And, and a storm like this brings out two things, the very best of mankind and the very worst of mankind. And when you see the looting and ransacking, that's the worst. But you're also going to see all the people that are volunteering and coming to help for those that have lost literally everything they've ever had. And, and Superstorm Sandy for me was very emotional because I saw firsthand the death, the devastation, and that people felt hopeless and helpless. And that's why FEMA and all the other agencies 
Hopefully, the president will dispatch all of the resources of the federal government. But under the leadership of Governor DeSantis, I do feel confident that on that personal level, he will do his very best to make to give people the hope that they're desperately going to need. I would also say the people criticizing this comment probably haven't spent a lot of time in Lee County, and I would imagine, at least based on the folks that I know who live there, they don't want looters coming to their community. They certainly don't want illegal migrants coming to their community either. And the fact that this is both scenarios in one cir in one circumstance, I, I think Governor DeSantis is probably accurately reflecting the mindset of a lot of those folks down there. Meantime, I want to talk more about uh, President Biden's broken borders. And Bernie, this is a story that we talked about last night. Uh, there was an FBI raid in Woburn, Massachusetts. Massachusetts authorities arrested two restaurant owners for human trafficking. According to prosecutors, they coordinated to bring Brazilians and other illegals into the country for tens of thousands of dollars. And when they couldn't afford to pay for their journey here to the United States, they would be offered a job to pay it off for $3 an hour. And, you know, this is what we hear so much about, Bernie, but this is slavery in the 21st century. Well, there's two things, John. Uh, is slavery in the 21st century. Uh, and the second part of that is this is something that Nancy Pelosi uh, endorses. Uh, mm -hmm. I listened to her press conference last week in which she said, all these illegals, you should get them into Florida, let them work the crops, let them work here, let them work there. Uh, nobody knows better than me and Michael Grimm um, the outcome of hiring an illegal, of somebody that is not supposed to be here. Unfortunately, when it was my, when it was me, uh, I was targeted by the U.S. government. I was prosecuted for the same exact thing. And now Nancy Pelosi and all the people that attacked me back then, every one of them, they're supporting allowing the illegals into the country, and they're endorsing people hiring them, which is a federal crime. Michael, do you want to add your thoughts to that? I mean, obviously, Pelosi is saying that. That's what, the, mm -hmm. that's what apparently the immigrants are good for, uh, are these, these jobs, too. A hundred percent. And, you know, the commissioner said it well. I know this is unfortunately personal for him as it is for me. You know, the politicization and the weaponization of our of our government is long before Donald Trump, as it's happened to the commissioner, because they wanted to go after, you know, his boss, Rudy Giuliani. They did it to me to get me out of office. They went back five years to a restaurant I invested in to say there were three delivery boys off the books. Now, for everyone else, that was a fine with the Department of Labor. But the point here is that they're duplicitous and their the hypocrisy is overwhelming they destroyed my career and criminalized me for three delivery boys off the books but yet here's the speaker of the house nancy pelosi saying we should send them down and give them all these jobs so listen it's 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 upsetting for me it's very personal for me as it is the commissioner but i think that the american people are starting to see it they're starting to see through this hypocrisy and why it is a double standard. If you're a liberal, if you're part of the wokeism, if you are far left, you can pretty much do and say everything that you're accusing those on the right of, and it seems to be okay. They have the moral high ground, so to speak. It's disgraceful, it's disgusting, and we need to close our borders. And, and I'll be the first to admit, this is kind of a forest for the trees uh, conversation for me, Bernie, when you, I was like getting smacked in the face because we've tried to think about every possible uh, person impacted by these open borders. I didn't think personally about your story and how infuriating that must be for both you and for Michael uh, when you have the Speaker of the House openly advocating for hiring illegal immigrants. Meantime, you hear all this conversation, supposedly bipartisan talk about E-Verify, something that they all uh, can get behind. But really, this is a perfect example of the hypocrisy associated with our immigration system right now. But uh, we have some other stuff we want to talk about with you guys. We'll yeah, mention that and as we well. thank you for being so upfront and open about you know what you went through. It, it takes a lot of courage, and you both have that. Um, but we do want to also highlight this crime surge um, in the U.S. because there's a new report out from the National Fraternal Order of Police. So far this year, these are the numbers. We are outpacing the number of officers shot and killed. Um, you see this here. There's a statement uh, where the president of the FOP says, I call on Americans in every community across the country to join us in taking a stand to say enough is enough. 252 officers shot in the line of duty 50 officers killed by a gunfire bernie first to you you see these numbers you see what's happening in our country please uh, give us your thoughts on on where we go from here this is what happens when governors fail this is what happens when governors sign into law bail reform laws that embolden and allow the bad guys to do what they want to do this is what happens when you have prosecutors that don't prosecute 
and and they basically allow you know violent criminals to roam the street. And this is what happens when you have mayors and congresswomen, congressmen, and members of city councils that endorse defunding the police, which takes away manpower, takes away resources, takes about it takes away training. Everything we try to give the cops in the streets today to make them better, more efficient, and safer, they are taking away. That's what happens. We were just talking about this, Michael, with our panel. You know, the Democratic Party is the party of crime. We have Cori Bush, the congresswoman from Missouri, saying no matter what you call it, reallocating, whatever, it's defunding the police, and Democrats should not run away from that. What's your reaction to that? About 100 percent. And listen, you cannot demonize demagogue and demean our police and not expect the general public to lose respect for the police and figure out that, as the commissioner just said, they're not going to be prosecuted anyway. In fact, the advocates that are supposed to be the prosecutors for the victims are advocating for the criminals. So taking shots at police officers, killing police officers is a rite of passage for some of these gangbangers because there is no more respect for the uniform. There's no respect for the individual inside the uniform. And, you know, I, I recently was just speaking with a couple of uh, police officers of color that said, you know what our biggest problem is? I'm black, I'm Spanish, I'm whatever I may be. They don't see that on the street. They see me as blue. And that's the problem, and, that, and this uniform is going to continue to be targeted as long as this rhetoric and this nonsense continues, and, and they need to own it. Your point is well taken about the community following the, their leadership, the folks they elected to Congress, but I also think, you know, that axiom holds true. You don't know what you got until it's gone, and these communities that have defunded the police, they see the crime spikes. They'll be begging for police to come back into their communities. We've already started to see that in places like Minneapolis, for example. But great to see you both, and thanks again for sharing your own personal stories, Michael Graham and Bernie Carrick. Gentlemen, we appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, John. Thank you. All right, well, Thanks. the world. Thank you, John. Thank you, John.